Dr. Chopra, you spoke about and wrote in your books that coffee is one of the most important protectors of health. Could you please expand on your idea and talk about the coffee's effect for health? Yeah, it's a great question. So, as you mentioned, I'm a liver expert, and I got very intrigued about 25 years ago when I read that coffee drinkers have low levels of liver enzymes in the blood. So when we go see our primary care physician once a year, they do a battery of blood tests. And amongst them, they test for two liver enzymes, ALT and AST. And this was an observation that people who drank coffee had lower levels. When somebody has elevated levels, it's almost always indicative of liver disease. So this was intriguing, but what does it mean? Maybe there's something in coffee that interferes with the assay, and so you get lower levels. But then studies came out that coffee drinkers have less hepatic fibrosis. They have less scar tissue in the liver. If there's lots of scar tissue in the liver, totally distorting the liver architecture with islands of liver cells totally surrounded by scar tissue, fibrosis, we call it cirrhosis. So coffee drinkers had lower levels of liver enzymes. They had less fibrosis. Then a study in gastroenterology that people who drank two cups of regular coffee a day had a 50% reduction in hospitalization and mortality from chronic liver disease. It turns out that primary liver cancer, cancer arising in the liver, is now the third leading cause of cancer mortality in the world. And multiple studies and a meta-analysis have shown that people who drink two cups of regular coffee, 40% reduction in primary liver cancer mortality. So less lower liver enzymes, less scarring, less fibrosis, less hospitalization, less mortality, less liver cancer. It turns out that coffee drinkers also have a lower risk of four other common cancers, metastatic prostate cancer, colon cancer, skin cancer, including malignant melanoma, very deadly skin cancer, and endometrial cancer. So five cancers, people who drink coffee have a low incidence. Low risk of Parkinson's disease, low risk of cognitive decline, early dementia, low risk of type 2 diabetes. And for type 2 diabetes, one has to drink six cups of coffee, regular or decaf, and then there's a 40 to 54% reduction in risk of developing type 2 diabetes. If somebody already has type 2 diabetes, and they drink two cups of coffee a day, regular or decaf, 30% reduction in cardiovascular mortality. So pretty impressive. There are mechanistic explanations. Coffee drinkers have lower levels of CRP, lower levels of TNF-alpha. Improves and reduces the infl inflammation. inflammation. Yeah, and that may be the mechanism where it decreases many conditions. Uh, the risk of developing them, or even cancer, which we now know is linked with inflammation. C-reactive protein uh, C -reactive is a very protein, sensitive indicator of inflammation. True, so true. So a study appeared in the New England Journal of Medicine about four years ago. Uh, and that day, I got about 100 plus emails from colleagues around the country. Sanjeev, you've been talking about coffee all these years and its potential health benefits. You're vindicated. And the study in the New England Journal of Medicine that said men and women who drink coffee have lower total and cause specific mortality. And then about six, eight months ago, an article in one of the nutrition journals that people who drink coffee have longer telomeres. So telomeres were described by Elizabeth Blackburn, an Australian scientist. She got the Nobel Prize in Medicine or Physiology in 2009 with two other colleagues. And shortened telomeres are linked with accelerated cellular aging. So who has shortened telomeres? Mothers of chronically disabled children, caregivers of people with Alzheimer's. Who has longer telomeres? And by inference, they may live longer. We think they'll live longer. People who exercise, people on the Mediterranean diet, people who meditate, and then the recent study that people who drink coffee have longer telomeres. Does it matter which coffee to drink, how much coffee one should drink, and what is the frequency that the coffee yeah. should be used? So it's a great question. Um, the studies have simply asked, do you drink coffee? Yes or no? If you drink, how many cups do you drink? And what is the size of the cup? And do you drink regular or decaf? My take on it is that if 
drink regular coffee if you can. It has more benefits than decaf. And don't add cream or sugar substitutes. Um, I'd like to drink it black, make it simple. Then I don't have to worry about sugar and Splenda and do I put milk and is the milk cold and it's going to make my coffee cold. So I drink black coffee. If somebody wants to sweeten it, add sugar. Don't use artificial substitutes. Artificial sugars are turning out to produce worse glucose intolerance because it actually changes the microbiome in the GI tract. This is one of the hottest topics in medicine. <clears throat> microbiome, it's been called the second human genome, the inner bacterial drain forest. There are trillions of bacteria in our GI tract. In aggregate, they weigh three pounds. It's a newly discovered organ. So if you want to have a Coca-Cola, have a Coca-Cola. Maybe have one third, savor it, enjoy it, rather than have a Diet Coke, which has only one calorie, but actually has many injurious health effects.